hypnotized every single commercial that I see. It's like they hypnotize you or something. I don't know. Typhoon 2. I really want a mini Typhoon 2. Joseph, Jonathan, Jordan, Donnie, and Danny. I like that. I want that for Christmas. I want that for my birthday. Yes! They lift, dude. Look at all that scenery, and they fly, and you're all cool. Hi, I'm Jim Fife, and this is a show about why we buy the things we buy and what makes us say, hey, buy me that. Oh, buy me that. Buy me that, too. I'm talking about commercials and all the ways they try to make you feel you can't live without that new video game or those super cool sneakers or that amazing toy. But can you really trust those commercials? Is what you see always what you get? We're going to find out. Take a look at this commercial for one of those hot-looking, high-priced, radio-controlled racers you can't wait to get your hands on. Typhoon 2. The fastest 9.6-feet turbo hovercraft in the world. Typhoon 2. It's bigger, hotter, giant turbo props for maximum power. Rechargeable 9.6-feet battery pack. Incredible straight-line speed. Fly over land and water on a cushion of air. Check out the way the Typhoon 2 zooms around that rocky maze. Look easy? Look what happens when we hand the controls to these kids. Watch them try to maneuver the Typhoon 2 around some obstacles they set up. No, no. When I tried to control it, it didn't work. It went like crazy and everything. It was very hard. When you were on the obstacle course, it would, it was so hard to control because it would always like crash and you would have to stop the fan and turn and someone would have to turn it for you. And it used to always crash and everything. It didn't go really straight. It was it was very hard to control. It went to that side and that side and went all around. So the Typhoon 2 doesn't handle very easily on land. But didn't they say something about water? Fly over land and water on a cushion of air. Three bigger, more powerful turbo motors. Right. Now this should be awesome. Let's watch that Typhoon fly. Now go go off this. Here, let's try this. Here, let's go. Ouch! In the commercial, whenever they launched it, it went off. Whenever we tried it, it just went crashed in the water. We tried it many times and it never worked. Try to launch it! Once you put it like in, it sinks. Try it again, one more time. Be careful when you take it out. Oh, it broke! Every two minutes you're fixing it. Because the commercial, something. it makes it look so good. So good that you really want to buy it and then it's just not it, good. Whoa! It's out of power, I think. It's out of power. Oh. Ever get that sinking feeling? Not only is the Typhoon 2 much harder to operate than it looks, but guess what? You can only play with it for about 10 minutes before the battery dies. Another little surprise. The Typhoon 2 costs about $120, and the battery and recharger are extra. At that rate, the only thing this baby burns up is your money. And if you think the commercial for Typhoon 2 is too good to be true, get a load of this one for the G.I. Joe Battlecopter. G.I. Joe! Need a lift, Duke? Thanks! Look, Cobra's got the plasma talk! But here comes G.I. Joe Battlecopters, zip strip copters that really fly high! Perfect for dropping in and unexpected! Watch out, Duke, Cobra's got Battlecopters too! Cobra and G.I. Joe Battlecopters can work with any figure! G.I. Joe! Big people, big propellers, Big, exciting battles. Big deal. For this little toy, still, it looked like those battle copters did do some pretty neat stunts. I think I'll give it a try. Back up. This is going to be cool. Everything in place here? Here we go! Wow. Jeez, this thing is out of control. The only collision I can manage is with the ground. But in the commercial, the copter stayed up in the air for so long and did all those neat mid-air collisions. How could they do that? We asked a special effects team to show us one way it could have been done. To keep these copters flying like they did in the commercial took some work. First, we had to find a way to keep the rotors spinning. So we fitted a small electric motor and battery inside. 
Then we hung them from fishing line that's so thin it's invisible on film. The line's attached to these poles, which allows us to work these, like you see here, and control them while we stage our battle. Ready, Judy? I'm ready. Okay, hold yours level right there, Judy. Bring it up. So what do you really get when you buy the G.I. Joe battle copter? No motor, no poles, no way to pull off all those stunts. All you get is a little plastic toy and a giant letdown. They show you the doll with the slain and the little girl, and you think that if you get this doll or something, it'll make you cooler. That's basically the idea. You get so excited when you see it, but then when you get home and it doesn't work, you feel like marching back to the store and telling them that That's they, why they have receipts. I asked my mother, please get me, get me, get me that, please, please, please. As an example, I'm saying. Commercials aren't things you only see on television. Sometimes they pop up in the most surprising places, like in movies. And I don't mean before the show starts. Companies arrange to have their products appear right up on screen with your favorite stars. This is called product placement. Watch. Let's see how many hidden commercials you can spot in these popular movies. Three. Whoa! You're right! Here's a clue to get you started. Notice those bags of Lay's and Doritos held just so, just so you're sure not to miss them. Catch you later, Bill and Ted. What do you mean? Guys, I'm eating junk and watching rubbish. You better come out and stop me. Thirsty for another clue? Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. If all those sodas in Home Alone are too little to pick out, how about one that's really, uh, big? Soda? You want one? Yeah, sure. The Pepsi company hopes you'll want one when the movie's over. And lots of other companies have the same idea. Why are these hidden commercials? Because the products seem to belong in the movie. But the real reason they're there is to sell you something. Two double whoppers with fries and two giant Cokes. You're the new king! Did you get hungry watching King Ralph? Or the first Ninja Turtles movie? Time's up. Three bucks off. First, there's a nice big box. <laughs> then a joke about the company's delivery policy. Hey, this is a 10. The tab's 13. You're two minutes late, dude. If you left the theater craving a pepperoni pie, now you know why. Just when you least expect it, you could get hit by a commercial in disguise. Heads up. The next time you see a product in a movie and you wonder why it's there, remember, it's probably no accident. <laughs> you know, hidden commercials don't only appear in movies. You can also find them in video games. Get a load of this. Yeah! There's no escaping these Pizza Hut signs in the Ninja Turtles 2 arcade game. And if you don't move out of the way, you get clobbered by them. Meanwhile, in Arch Rivals, British Knights ads are everywhere. When you score, the sign pops up next to the coach. Whenever you cross mid-court, it's in your face. Get the feeling they're trying to sell you something? Hidden commercials in movies, sneaky ads in video games. What's next? Coke signs on the moon? <laughs> well, that's impossible, isn't it? Here's your chance to be an official member of the greatest club around, the USA Network Kids Club. The Kraft Cheese and Macaroni Club. You can get all kinds of new stuff like, no, wrong door, like a painter's cap and egg low shoelaces. Have you noticed lately how everyone wants you to join their club? The Burger King Kids Club. It's just for fun and just for you. Just for you, just for fun. These kids' clubs sound good, but what do you really get when you sign up? We talked to some kids who joined the Burger King Kids Club. It's one of the biggest clubs with over a million members. Listen to the true stories of these card-carrying club kids. I joined the Burger King Kids Club last summer with my friend, and I was supposed to get all these huge discounts, and I didn't. 
All I got was like some stickers. I didn't get anything else after that. And and then I just felt sort of loose. I didn't feel like I was part of it. We don't get to meet any new people and you don't get any coupons and you still have to pay full price and well you don't get a lot of things. They said they'd give me buttons, they said they'd give me a t-shirt, and they said that they'd give me a lot of things, but it never came. What I expected was, like, a lot of things and at least names of other people in the club. It turned out you only get a pack of stuff every year. I've been in it since around its, when it started, and I think it's a ripoff. So, when you hear the words kids club, think twice. Some kids clubs aren't clubs at all. They may just be another way to get you into a restaurant or to get you to spend money. Say, I have an idea. I'll start a club for all the disappointed club kids we met. They could come and hang out with me and not have to buy a single thing. The Jim Fife Club. What do you think? I've never heard of it. It's Jim Fife. Is he ugly? Where did he come from? I would want to know who is the guy, the guy, and, and what, what do you do? do? Well, okay, so no one knows me. Fine. Then my club will be very, very exclusive. The Jim Fife Club. It's just for fun, and it's just for me. Two World Wrestling Federation figures, all set to slug it out. Get ready for some heavy action. Sound exciting? Well, not really. The figures don't make any sound at all. But listen to how this commercial makes them sound when you tune out all the yelling. Ooh, he'll pay for that. Hulk Watch Hogan with my new Mach 2 Master. Man, Hulk's just gonna put the squeeze on you. And now you're taking the ultimate punishment. Let's get ready! Hulk run all of you. You WWF figure so close to the real thing. It's like being in the ring. Pow, bang, wham. How did they make these little guys sound so close to the real thing? It's like being in the ring! With something called sound effects. Ah! I must be catching something. Wow! Sound effects can make anything sound awesome. 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 Especially in commercials. But how do they do it? They make dog walking, rubber swords, bubble gum, leaves, blades, and potato chips sound bigger, better, and more exciting than they really are. Oh, that's great. That sounds yeah. really crunchy. We went to the sound studio where all these sound effects were made to find out. Here in our studio, we've got 32 different floor surfaces, hundreds of shoes, lots of food, and all kinds of stuff we've collected to make different sounds. I'm always amazed when things work because we try some pretty wild things. Okay, give me the coconuts, shells. Here we go. Thank you. Okay, George, roll it. Okay, looks good. I'll do the saddle, you'll do the rind. Okay? Right. If you tried to hang a microphone on a horse, you'd get a bumpy sound. We can get a perfect sound by using coconuts, a ski boot, and some belts. Nice Good. ride. For this one, you do the blades and I'll do a whoosh, okay? Okay, go. Ooh, that was a good one. Let's play that one back. Go back. A lot of times we experiment with all different kinds of things to see what gives us the best sound. For a fight scene, even with toy figures, we might try punching a defrosted turkey. It sounds real and no one gets hurt. Okay, cut. Sometimes we'll use audio tape or videotape Put it in a pit with a bunch of grass and dirt, and it sounds just like dried leaves. 
Now listen to these rubber swords. Not too exciting, are they? No problem. We've got metal ones that sound great. One of my favorite things to do is dog footsteps. You can use gloves with guitar picks. I'll do the paws if you do the feet. Oh, I love to do high heels. Go, oh, we're ordered. Okay, cut. Aren't we forgetting something? Now we've caught a dog that could fool even another dog. We can make anything sound better, even potato chips. I know what we need for this one. Let's see if we can do it together. Right on! Now this one is different. Mm -hmm. You're right. I think I have an idea. Watch that. That's good. <laughs> That's great. When I watch a lot of commercials, I always seem to repeat them on the sidewalk, and I don't know what I'm doing. And then when I finally realize it, I'm, like, so embarrassed. And sometimes you get carried away, and you start to sing with it. And it's so weird. So that's how they get you, like, to buy things. And it works on me a lot. Um, and then they put the TV show back on, and they keep doing that, and that's how I got a lot of toys. It's the new kids on the block. Joseph, Jonathan, Jordan, Donnie, and Danny. Who's their number one fan? I'm the number one fan. I've got all five concert kits with all five personal interview cassettes. I am. I've got all five concert kits with their cassettes and the new kids' stage. Plus all five kids in their street clothes. I am. I've got all the kids, including all five possible kids and all five huggable Showtime kids. I love Showtime kids. New Kids on the Block concert kids with cassette, Hanging Loose Kids, Possible Kids, and Showtime Kids sold separately. Wait a minute. What are they saying in that commercial? Are they saying that to be the biggest fan of a group, you have to buy the most stuff? Well, what if you actually believed that commercial and bought everything? Let's just see what it would cost to be the number one fan of New Kids on the Block. I asked math champion Adam Lewis to give me a hand because this is going to take some serious calculating. Hi, Adam. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Pretty good. Ready to go? Sure. Okay. Okay. We've got the concert kids with cassettes at $17.99 each. The Hanging Loose kids at $14.99 each. The Huggable Showtime kids at $25 each. And you know, the worst part is the commercial makes you feel like you've got to have them all to be a loyal fan. The Posable kids at $5.99 each. And don't forget, that's times five for all five kids. And the stage at $21.99. And it all adds up to? A grand total of $341.84. Wow. They don't tell you about that in the commercial. You know, where I come from, buying all of a group's stuff doesn't make you cooler or more popular. It just makes you broke. Listen, you can be a big fan of new kids on the block just by listening to their music. And you'll have something that the kids in the commercial don't have. 341 bucks. And 84 cents. Yo! Listen, listen. Bono's has got the air bang. Air bang. Pump up. It's gotta be the shoe. It's gotta be the shoe. Shoe. The shoe. And air out. Ooh. Man, all those great athletes. Bo, Dominique. Michael. Those commercials make it look like their expensive sneakers will give you an edge. Like a little bit of their magic will rub off on you if you buy them. But will it really? There's only one way to find out. Tie them and try them. <laughs> we decided to check out a couple of the best known celebrity sneakers and former NFL linebacker Brian Bosworth helped us put them to the test. Hey, look, we all get pumped up when we see our favorite superstars while they're doing their thing, while wearing these outrageous shoes, right? Let's find out if these shoes really deliver. To start off, each of my friends are gonna run down the court as fast as they can. They'll wear the pumps, the Air Jordans, and a pair of shoes that cost a lot less. We'll test each runner's speed as they race in all three sneakers. 
and we'll see if the high price celebrity shoes really help anyone run faster. Are we ready? Ready! Set, go! Now remember, our runners are racing in all three sneakers, trying to beat their own time. While our officials tallied up the kids' running times, we went out and did another test to see if the celebrity sneakers would make anyone jump higher. We had everyone hit the wall three times in each pair of sneakers, slam dunking different colored paint. So let's check it out. So, the results are pretty clean, huh? Yep. Shoes didn't make you jump any higher, did they? No. And from your running test, they didn't make them run any faster either. No. If you play basketball well, then you'll get a shot. It's not the sneaker. I don't think they spring you off the ground like they show in the commercials. It's like, oh, he's jumping that high. I could do that if I have those sneakers. And it doesn't really happen. So like you have to train for it. Jim, you got the ball. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Boz. The next time you see a celebrity in a commercial, think about this. They're getting paid to sell you something. Remember Paula Abdul in her Reeboks? It seemed like she'd be dancing in those shoes forever, but that was last year. Now she's into LA gear. I wonder what she'll be selling next year. When I see some TV commercials about one kind of cereal, they always have a toy in it or something that gets kids to want to buy it. Now you can get a Cap'n Crunch Topper and move them up, down, all around. I don't eat the cereal at all. I just, when I get it, I open it, and then I start digging for the small prize. After he eats the Cheerios, he wins the race, and it makes you, like, it makes you want to buy it because it makes you think that you'll run faster, hit better, catch better, feel better. He's feeling his Cheerios! Did you know there are over 200 different brands of cereal out there trying to get your attention? And if they can't do it with new commercials, or new characters, or new shapes, they'll do it by offering prizes, toys, gummy bear figures, 3D baseball cards. Cards are a safe bet in any collection. One's free in Kellogg's Corn Flakes. You might hurry before we're out. Okay, I have to admit it. There are some offers even I can't resist. Like that one. I love baseball cards, and I want to collect the whole set of 15. Let's see who I get. Just get rid of the cereal here first. Great! Boog Pow! I gotta get another one. I can't wait to see who I get in this one. Boog Powell again. Gee, I wonder how many boxes of cornflakes I'd need to get all 15 cards. I mean, I, I could order them, but I'd much rather get them free with the cereal. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Bring on the flakes! And a bigger bowl, please! Can anybody tell me how many boxes of this stuff I need to complete the set? I feel like I've opened a million boxes and I still don't have all 15 guys. I know. I'll ask Adam. Hey, Adam. Adam, help me out here. What's it going to take for me to get all 15 guys? Well, there's a 
percent probability that you'd get all 15 guys if you went through 73 boxes. 73 boxes? Yep, 73. I need 73 boxes of cornflakes just to have a good chance of getting all 15 guys? You got it. Thanks, Adam. Boy, I thought I was collecting baseball cards. Looks like I'm really collecting cornflakes. Commercials, man. They've got plenty of ways to dazzle you and even more ways to fool you. But here are some tips to help you make up your own mind. Tip number one. If something looks too good to be true, maybe it is. Tip number two. Those great sounds you hear are often make-believe. The toys make no sound at all. Tip number three. Spending more money doesn't make you a better fan. It just makes you broke. Hanging loose kids, posable kids, and showtime kids sold separately. Tip number four. Those high-priced celebrity sneakers won't make you a better athlete. Tip number five. Watch out for hidden commercials in movies and video games. They're no accident. And tip number six. If you join some kids' clubs, remember, you won't get new friends. You will get new ways to spend your money. But you know, the best thing about all these commercials is you don't have to listen to them. Thank you. Hello? Mom? Why are you calling? I, I, I know. I know, Mom. I know that was the rule at our house, that you, that you finish everything, but I can't do that now. I'm right in the middle of a TV show. Now? Yes, sir. I, uh, yes, ma'am. I will. I, I love you too, Mom. Okay, bye. Well, as I was saying, you don't have to listen to all those commercials. But you do have to listen to your mother. My mom says, when you open the box, you eat the cereal. So long. <laughs>